<laughs> I did that for a while. Um, okay, so first, Jared, fantastic job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, did you have a favorite scene that you had the most fun with? My favorite scene was probably lighting the doors on fire, <laughs> honestly. Fire's pretty awesome. Yeah, especially because um, when you say this is the racket, if you touch the door, it instantly sprang to life with fire. That is so cool. So pretty much exactly like it looked in the movie. Awesome. That is so cool. He was very brave. Yeah, yeah that was, that's some pretty intense uh, stunt work there in that end scene. Um, it was very important to Jared that he did his own stunts. That, uh, we learned that very early on. Good we had a stunt double, and he would have, he would have none of it. And it, 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 it seemed <laughs> to be all practical. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so where did you guys draw? What informed the sociopath? Um, what, like, what it made the movie, pretty much? Uh, I get, well, I'll tell you, I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll, I'll talk okay. about where it started, and then maybe you can go into that. So, sure, Clay sure, wrote sure. a novel titled Miss Corpus. <laughs> that, I know. Wait, you can, you can, then you can chime in after. But I know exactly what you say, you say it every time. You can say it. <laughs> okay, he wrote a novel, Miss Corpus, and one of the chapters was called The Henry Road Motel, and out of that, they made a short and put it in Sundance, and then it won some awards, and then Spectre Vision saw it, and they said, hey, want to make this into a horror movie? And they said, yeah, they thought it was a great idea, and then, yeah. Sweet, very <laughs> cool, that sounds perfect. So, um, the character itself, was there uh, some other literary or, or cinematic influence that uh, helped shape that character? I mean, I think, I think what's interesting, and to kind of further uh, what, what Jared is saying, is that, uh, you know, uh, Craig and I collaborated on the script, and we uh, we have a, a kind of certain sensibility uh, where um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. But I, I'm the horror film guy, like I'm the dyed in the wool slasher film, like I'm I'm the guy who will watch every Friday the Thirteenth, and and Craig airs more on the side of psychological thriller, psychological thriller. <laughs> something a little bit more restrained, um, elegant, beautiful. Um, and I think not what, so gory. Not so gory. True, true. Um, the Polanski, the Friedkins, and what where we meet, you know, the middle ground is is some kind of uh, halfway point of of taking taking what I like about horror and what he likes about horror, and and just finding compromise isn't the right word, but it's it's the kind of it's the kind of mutual meeting point of, of our, our So it strikes out a very unique chord in a way. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, in the, the kind of development of Ted, there is this, this kind of uh, navigation of a uh, child sociopath. And I feel like, you know, we've all seen the checklist of like, you know, he hurts animals, he like, you know, fries ants with a magnifying glass. And like you could, you know, it's those cert certain kind of checklist points that we were aware of, but wanted to kind of at least kind of root in something a little bit more character based or, or just like, we just didn't want it to feel kind of pat and cliche. And, and that was hard. But I think what we did was say, um, you think you know child sociopaths, or, you know, this is like the origin story of Leatherface or Michael Myers. And, you know, who are those people? Not good people. That is a great question, and one you should never know the answer to. <laughs> Give it two, three years, and then, then you'll know. Two, three hundred years. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we, we always came back to, and this was the, it was always the kind of point that Craig made, like, it has to be real to this character. Not to some kind of pop psychology 101 list, but, like, to, to who we want Ted to be. And that was, like, a real kind of, like, strong mandate from Spectre Vision, from, from us, like, from the ground floor on up. Like, it couldn't be something, you know, succinctly kind of put into a list. Um, I guess to speak a little further on that, something that was very noteworthy in the movie, and I think that what you just described, it really comes through. We can see kind of the path that, that, um, that Ted is taking, um, and you, you're doing some awful things in that movie, terrible things. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about this interview. Like, you're doing awful things. <laughs> I, know, you're, I was the, like, what are the you Swedish, doing? The Swedish fish, was, that was over the line. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're, you're just, you're on a course for disaster. You, we can see that, and we know that nothing good is, you're not going to do anything good. 
but uh, again, I don't know how, how much we want to talk into spoilers, but there's that scene where, all right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, you're, it, it is one of the most heartrending scenes that um, I've, I've seen definitely in the modern horror, but uh, in film generally, um, the, the prom scene. The prom scene? Yeah. Why do, I, why do I feel so bad? Well, do you want to answer? Go for it. <laughs> Go for it, Jared. Because it's sad seeing a nine-year-old getting beat up <laughs> from a pack of teenagers. Really? It, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you were locked outside and saw a nine-year-old getting beat up by a pack of teenagers, how would you feel? I'd, it'd probably make me feel pretty, pretty bad. I mean, yeah. See, that's what happens in the movie. It was a conscious decision from the moment we started writing that at the end of this film we had to care and still love Ted, even though he does all these horrible things. So that's something we were, we were every time casting to hit like this kid, you know, we had to make sure you love him from minute one, you know. But that darkness is there from, you know, you see the seed of it. The bad seed is there from the get-go. But you do feel as if, like, there is a certain, uh-oh, watch out, watch out. Why do I feel like yeah! there's some looming terror on the couch next to me? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You got a future, kid. Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talk about his future too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, his bright, shining future. Yeah. Um, um, but and no, it's dark past. it's you 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 want to feel as if any element, if you take out if you take out the prom party, if you take out uh, William Colby Rain Wilson's character, if you take out if you take out. Uh, D- you know that that one scene with the deer. Like if if one of those elements is not there, there's the argument that could be made that this would not that be the quickly. future of the the serial killer to be. I think if you took out one of those scenes, it would be Ted becomes a serial killer too quickly. <laughs> you'd be you just like that. You'd become a serial killer. Yeah, Ted with this kind of gradually becomes one. But if if it was if you took out. William, it would be just quick, like right to the teens. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. But you're saying it's in you from the get go. You're gonna be, you're like ready to kill 15 minutes into the movie. No. You're an overachiever. That's the problem. Do you think if you had better parenting in the film, you would have taken a different path? Definitely. If my mom was there, nothing would have happened. There's that, that trucker from room five. I know. <laughs> Horrible man. <laughs> um, it's a monster. Really was so the score. Hauschka, so effective. Yeah, he's great. Wait, what's Hauschka? He's our composer. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah, uh, yeah, hit, hit exactly the right notes. I mean, it really brought to mind. I mean, not in substance, but it, it kind of served yeah. the same purpose. It's important for me to have a very unique score for this film. I wanted it to sound. Like nothing we've kind of seen before in a film, um, and he's, he's he's an interesting. He puts ping pong balls and pianos, and does, you know he does all this great prepared piano Wait, work. And uh, ping pong balls, yeah, he, all sorts of things. All the sounds, a lot of it is actually live. Uh, he recorded it all just like live, and then he would deliver the pieces to me, and then I would start editing his music and putting it under the scenes, and we just sort of uh, dance back and forth <coughs> that way. It was a really interesting uh, creative collaboration. Very cool. He's brilliant. Yeah, loved it. Um, any more questions for me? Yeah, so <laughs> I heard a, a rumor that you might have been in another movie that we saw this weekend. Cooties. Oh, Cooties. That but was... I only had one little line. If at the beginning of the movie before anyone, well, anyone got infected, um, I, I said um, I wore a black helmet. Yeah. I was watching oh, for that's you. That's what the gesture you made. I was like. Yeah, the helmet kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I was thinking about um, at Spectre Vision. Um, I don't. You guys can't answer this if Josh was here. Um, we never see Saint Elmo Boy as a zombie. Hmm. We never see Saint Elmo Boy as a zombie. Your character is a zombie. You never see it. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you think he survives. Maybe. Safety helmet ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, hey, you guys have had a long day. Thank you, you so much. You're being too you nice to us, man. You can no. really grill. Like it's totally yeah. fine. Like we're. Yeah. we're good. All right, all right. Well, um, okay, one, this is a very trivial question, but one that was eating me. The hat on the rack behind the counter, is that Ted's grandpa's? The hat behind the rack. On the it's, rack and behind the it's, cash register. Yeah, I mean, David and I had that conversation. Yeah, it's, it is. The idea is that it might be. 
Yeah, okay. Right. The oh, idea is what I was looking for. It's interesting that you saw this. Yeah. Um, all right, so I, can I just talk about one specific scene? And again, I don't know um, if, tell us if it's not something that you, know, you want us to talk about or if it's too much too soon. I don't know what um, kind of, yes. Yeah, we don't want to give too many spoilers away. I have two questions actually. I have a question, um, two questions actually for these guys. Is that okay? <laughs> Are you kidding? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so. Ask me if you can ask them questions. In The Boy 2 or 3, if you don't know, it's a trilogy. Ooh. And um, will we see the trucker in World 5? You'll have to wait and see. Dang it! <laughs> oh, and I saw a mistake in The Boy. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys talk about it when we get the camera and the recorder's off. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> um, we did get the wave off, though. Just now. <laughs> so.